Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avgardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 23 with the Pittsburgh Pirates. In our previous episode, we became World Series champions, um, which is obviously a good thing. We then turned uh, one of our minor leaguers into a different minor leaguer. It's not really that important right now. Um, but we are doing, I, I would argue, excellently. Uh, we also pushed out a couple of contract offers at the end of last week, uh, specifically for our folks entering arbitration. We're offering Juan Espinosa the qualifying offer. Um, I still want to try to bring him back. I'm just not sure how much money I'll have to do it. And this gives me flexibility, right? <clears throat> now, Mr. Padilla here believes he could be a starter. I would not put it past him. I think he might be able to manage it, but this control really deeply concerns me. Otherwise, I'd bring him back. That's the rub, right? That is the rub. If his control issues are put in a starting role, will they undo the rest of the package that makes him so effective? I'm wagering on now that they would. So we will see what happens as the offseason progresses and make some decisions based on that. I presently have a lot of money. Now, some that's about to go away. We decided we we're going to lock up Tinch, uh, get ourselves a proven closer so we don't have to worry about who does what. But as far as the rest of it, that's going to be more intriguing. Uh, we're going to see who we can get in the offseason. The other thing I was thinking about as I was loading up the game and thinking about what I want to talk about today is Sean Hill. Sean Hill is an interesting player. He's interesting because he's performed at a very, very high level. And he's still very young. He's still under 30, which means there's still going to be several more years of quality baseball in his future. But he is going to be very susceptible to changes in the offensive environment. In a way that other hitters won't because he only has one dominant tool, which is his discipline. So we'll expect him to get on base at a pretty high clip, which means, if nothing else, he's a reasonably good, uh, what you call it, leadoff guy. But the rest of his skills, while they're all above average, mean that all it takes is a bad year with Babip, and he's going to be much less useful. The most concerning thing from last year, though, is the absence of power. This number right here, more than this one, I don't care if it's 249, but it's like 500. This is a problem. And I want to do a little bit of analysis. We're right now, we only got him on, uh, we've offered him a one year deal. Right? Yeah, the only one who got a longer term deal is Tinch which is, frankly, what I want. Uh, so, I wish, and maybe OTP24 had things like a launch angle and exit velocity in them. Right now, it doesn't. But I'm hopeful that it will in the future. So, his bad up was actually pretty reasonable. So, this means it's not likely to be just luck. Let's look at the other numbers here. Is there anything else that leans me? He's a little more aggressive this year. This is the killer. His strikeout rate went up and his walks went down. Why does that matter? It basically means he is making less contact. He's not hitting the ball as often, which is going to draw everything down. Now, I'm not one of those old school baseball fans who's like, you are literally baseball Hitler if you strike out. That's preposterous. Um, all outs are created equally. Um, one might argue a strikeout is actually better than a double play. 
So all that is to say, the only reason strikeouts concern me is because it coincides with a a significant drop off in production. There's one other number to consider about. We talked about it briefly at the end of last episode. He was still pretty good against right-handed pitching. But lefties have always given him grief. So the other way to salvage his value would be to consider platooning him. Now, I don't like platooning if I don't have to do it. Why? The issue with platooning is it takes up two roster spots. And the last time I checked, uh, two is more than one. So that is obviously a potentially gigantic issue because it's you're basically using two roster spots where subpar performance from one roster spot might be more efficient. I'm not sure. We don't need a whole lot. I'd love to replace Anthony Jones. I'd love that. But I'm reasonably confident in Munoz being able to hold down right for us. I think he did a perfectly cromulent job last year. <clears throat> and he's still growing, right? Which is the most important thing you look for from your youngsters. He's going to very much be an all or nothing kind of hitter. But I'm willing to give that a chance. Uh, without question. Rebel R was fine, maybe not outstanding, but fine. Anthony Jones remains like the one player that I think would just be a much better off team if we could replace him with a quality center fielder. We're also going to need one starter, probably. It's entirely possible that Mr. Espinosa here um, does come back either on the short-term deal or he comes back long-term. <clears throat> but it's also worth noting he's already 32. And while he's been effective, I, I question the utility of spending a whole shit ton of money on him. We don't really have all that many needs. Um, I would be content to let Manny Toro have a full year at shortstop. I don't think he'd be brilliant, but I don't think he'd be terrible. Although I do believe he is best suited to be that utility guy. So the future there might be something else. The other thing to consider here is, is there a big time piece that would take us into another stratosphere? A luxury piece, in other words. And I don't really see one. Uh, if I ran it back with this exact lineup, I'd feel reasonably confident that we'd make the playoffs again. And we're going to have, about to have, a real crunch in the bullpen. So, one possibility is that Espinosa leaves, and I just put Camp back in the rotation. I definitely think that's appropriate. But the guy did real yeoman's work in the bullpen this season. And it seems like he found an extra gear that we didn't know he had. And what am I keeping him in the bullpen as, like, the mega guy? But I don't know yet. Um, I don't know for sure how I'd like to use him best. So shortstop, possible area of upgrade. Center field, definite area of upgrade. Second base, he's not getting expensive yet, so until he does, I don't really feel like we have to replace him. And there is still the hopes that he will finally learn how to take a fucking walk. Um, if he does, he becomes that much more valuable. The other topic to talk about before we go through the offseason, for what we're going to do here, is this topic. Manny Pozo. Mr. Pozo is under contract for three more seasons. Practically speaking, it's one guaranteed season and two more that are whatever. At some point, he will decline to the point where it's no longer sensible to keep him at third base. Who is his successor? It could be Robbie Rodriguez. But here's my concern. Robbie hasn't exactly torn it up in the minors. He's still super young. But for all of his tools... 
he's not capitalizing on them. If he is, and I don't think he's a third baseman. I really don't. I don't think he'd be good enough. So, we could use Robbie Rodriguez as the platoon guy for Sean Hill, maybe. Maybe he just needs a chance in the majors. But the thing is, is his minor league track record isn't very strong. Um, he's not hitting all that frequently. His play discipline leaves a lot to be desired. And while he usually cranks double-digit homers, he didn't do it last year. So I'm thinking we need another season in the minors to see what we've got there. Is Mike Soto the future? Mike Soto definitely has a better chance to stick at third base. <clears throat> but he really struggled with high A because he got injured. Um, and I want to keep him there. I want to let him develop at his own pace so that when we're ready to have him, he's good to go. Alex Huamani is legitimately a possibility to take over shortstop in the very near future. <clears throat> he showed me a lot in high A. Um, he hit well enough to carry his glove, and that's all we really expect from our shortstops. I'd love to see more, though. I'd love to see some extra tools that would make him even more valuable. But other than that, like, and yeah, Al McGuire would be a pretty solid choice to be a utility guy if we did, for example, decide to promote Soto. But I want him to work on his bat, too. So the question is, can Omero Spineo push Anthony Jones? And that's going to be a spring training question. If he can, then great. But I'm not convinced that he can. We'll see, though. We'll see, though. All right. Let's try to get some clarity by advancing time and seeing who actually is still going to be a Pittsburgh Pirate this time next year. Interesting. So Joe Camp is grumpy because I'm not offering him a guaranteed rotation spot. I want the flexibility, though. I'm not saying he will never pitch in a rotation again, but what I'm saying is that I don't want to guarantee him the spot. Because if I decide it's better to keep him in the pen, then we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to incentive the shit out of this. If you give me just 80 innings, I will give you another million dollars. I value the consistency more than I value if you make the all-star team, that's another 250 grand. Is this gonna get you over the hump? I'd rather pay you more for right now and maintain flexibility. Because you might well end up in the rotation, but I'm not going to guarantee that just yet. All right, so Mike Tinch locked up. We got Joe Jobson back. We got Sean Hill back. Um, where did I even want you to be my pitching coach? I'll happily pay him more because I remember he's a really good pitching coach. So let's step this up to 150 grand and see if that gets him to sign. I don't know, it's breaking news. Like, I didn't think he was not going to sign, but cool. Okay, good. Uh, we were able to basically buy flexibility for the cost of a million bucks. I am pretty happy about that.
Uh, these guys can go to triple A. Guys, I don't think we're getting Dave Bach, so I should probably try to get another dude. Let's go to uh, front office. And let's get Hyunjun Im. That seems like a good pick. Joe Camp got reliever of the year. I didn't expect that, for sure. A silver slugger for Henry Salgado, which makes complete perfect sense. A manager of the year, an MVP for Salgado, a unanimous MVP. Very nice. Very nice indeed. All right, you know the drill. This is his last chance. And I genuinely don't know how it's going to swing for him. This might be it. He might be out. And I guess I've come to grips with that. I think he legitimately deserves to be a Hall of Famer, but his problem is he's a right fielder. And some of the best baseball players in Major League history are right fielders. And he's not that. He is not like a Ruth. I think Ruth played right field. Manny Ramirez played right. Um, Hank Aaron played pretty much anywhere. I don't remember if he's more of a right fielder or a left fielder, though. He could have played center, he just didn't. Um, but regardless, some of the very best players in history of Major League Baseball were right fielders. And so that's what Gummels is running up against. And he's not your stereotypical crank all the homers guy. He was, let me draw every walk humanly possible. That's an issue for him. We do have Andre Sevilla, though. So he's going to get a vote for certain. You gotta vote for your people, right? That's what I've always said. Um, all right, looking for big vote totals. People really wanna vote in Kevin Cranston. <clears throat> I guess he was a good enough fielder to win a couple gold gloves, a nine-time all-star, hit 500 plus home runs. That seems worthy of the Hall of Fame. And he's a third baseman, which is a hard role to fill. Mike Giles, I think, deserves it just. Um, we'll try Rodolfo Heredia. I don't think it's going to work, but we'll try it. Manzo, okay. Yeah, Boy Scout, I legitimately forgot I had you, and you clearly suck. Time McDonald had better be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, if this career doesn't get you a Hall of Fame, I don't know what will. Plus, he would go in as a Pittsburgh guy. That's pretty cool. Um, Eddie Munoz, I'm just not that impressed by the complete package. He's no Garrett Gunnels, that's for sure. I'll give a vote to Jordan Tercios. Yeah, I feel pretty good about this ballot. Uh, let's vote for it here. 
Ironically, our first Hall of Famer might end up being Tommy McDonald, because uh, I think he would go with a Pittsburgh hat. Which is pretty funny, but I'll still take the credit for it. I just don't think it counts so much because I didn't develop him, right? He was a pretty damn good player before I ever touched him. Excellent. I am also anxious for you to get started with my organization here. This is going to be interesting. I don't know whether Espinosa will take the qualifying offer. You're going to give me... Players of literally no value. I'm not saying Matt Hawkins is like the next megastar, but he's versatile enough that I don't want to give him up for nothing. So no, this is going to be a flat out rejection. Womp womp. Okay. Will Espinosa take the qualifying offer? Okay, he is a officially a free agent. Cool. Interesting that RJ Padilla is like the number one name on the market. I do find that curious. Let us go ahead, my dear friends, and check out the free agent market. I don't expect to be a big player here, though. I truly don't. Um, if I find a quality starting pitcher, I'll probably add that. If I find a good center fielder, I might pursue that. But for the most part, I'm not going to get too involved in this free agent market. Uh, so please give me... I want to lay the land right now. What if I sign Jim Gender? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, it's, it's over with. I'm never bringing him back. Now you intrigue me a lot. A fastball curveball guy. You would be an excellent replacement if I decide to put Joe Camp back in the rotation. So I think you would be a perfect option. I'm not going to guarantee you the closer role, but I will sign you if you want an opportunity. Um, so let's look at center field. Yeah, Sergio Lara ain't shit anymore. I don't even want you anymore, dude. You're the worst. Yeah, Ian Burnett wants to get paid like an all-star, which he is not. I mean, I guess Tenley is a two-time all-star. I don't buy it. Uh, you don't really do it for me. I'd rather keep Anthony Jones. He's at least a really good fielder. What do we got at shortstop? Luis Contreras is not a fucking shortstop. Don't piss on me and tell me it's raining. Chris Merrill, did you used to play for me? I completely legitimately did not remember that I ever had you. You never actually played for me in the majors, so. You had a very long career with Oakland. Um, I wouldn't pay $1 for Clint Daly at this point, to be quite honest with you. $1 feels like too much. Um... There ain't nobody here that's a good fit for the Pirates offensively, so I will politely decline. Let's look at starting pitching. I think this is going to be a fairly good market for starting pitching. So Juan Espinosa wants $27 million. He ain't getting that from me. You can be assured of that. Good movement, pretty good control, and a nice repertoire of pitches. But I can't help to notice Mr. Jose Monteverdi here would cost a $1.6 million. 
So I guess here's a consideration, right? If I get Rios, I can then kick Camp back into the rotation. And that's got plenty of value to it. I'm not paying you to be like a megastar because I don't need one. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna wait. I, I know it seems silly. I've got a lot of money. But I just don't have anything worth spending it on. I'd rather get Rios, shore up the bullpen, and then promote, um, put Camp back in the rotation. Like, I'm not saying that Camp is flawless in the rotation, but I'd rather have him in the rotation than just about anybody else that I've got. So my friends, let us go ahead and proceed all the way to the Rule 5. I have literally no interest in anyone in the market right now. Uh, you are correct. I wouldn't be surprised to see Tommy McDonald make it. He does go with the Pittsburgh cap. I mean, it counts as a Hall of Famer, but it doesn't count as one for me. Because I just signed him when he was already, like, a great pitcher, right? I always recognized that he was amazing and gave him a lot of money. Which doesn't seem to be that challenging. Like, if you have the money to sign Juan Soto, you sign Juan Soto. There's... You just do it. Uh, fans apparently love Victor Rios. Cool story. Let's promote you to the active roster, and then we will proceed with the rest of the offseason. It's just a weird offseason. Like, okay, how much money did Espinosa get? First of all, I'm getting a supplemental first round draft pick, and he get twenty one million a year for five years. I wish you well, Nationals, with Mister Espinosa. I will definitely keep tabs on him, but I think you got wrecked. I don't think he's worth twenty one million dollars. I genuinely don't. In order to do that, he'd have to put up uh, three to four wins every season for the life of the contract. I just don't see that happening. To be perfectly blunt with you I don't think he's going to manage that and I think you're going to regret signing him to that long a deal but I like the first round draft pick so thank you um, I will happily take your supplemental and use it for quality upgrades I'm probably not going to get involved in free agency until or unless somebody gets hurt in spring training that, I think, is when I'll probably get more involved. I can see Clint Daly, like, shows up. Like, please, just $100, please. Autograph until pick. Somebody wanted Xavier Goodwin and Jose Medina. Great. I mean, Jose Medina is apparently, like, the most brilliant defensive first baseman ever. That's fine. Xavier Goodwin, yeah, he's okay. I just have way too many pitchers, and so it's just a little bit more likely here. Is there any top qualita? high potential sort to stash on my bench for a year. You know how I like doing that. All players. Um.
Not really. I don't really see anything here that's all that exciting. A save us maybe, but only a little bit. And I think I'd rather give other players a more expanded role. So I think we will simply complete the draft. If I lose like six people, I lose like six people. I don't really care that much. Aw, LA, you love my picture so much you took him right away. That's very heartwarming. Now, if Clint Daly retires, I'd love to make him an infield coach. I think he'd be very good at that, but yeah. I did not know that about Greg Maddox. That's pretty wild. Wow. Um, Avila being first ballot? I did not expect. Look at those shiny ass Pittsburgh caps. That's pretty baller. Um, yeah. Two Pittsburgh Pirates added to the Hall of Fame, and one of which we definitely developed. Um, I think Andres Avila was possibly the classic example of a market inefficiency. Because he had a rag arm, right? But the man knew how to hit. And he was good enough defensively that he was a top-tier player for a very long time. So, congratulations, my friends. You have both made the Hall of Fame. You know, I guess I never realized how long he picked with Pittsburgh. But yeah, that makes perfect sense he would pick my cap over theirs. But yeah, we got it, gentlemen, ladies, and other folks who may be watching today, regardless of what gender you prefer. Uh, we have two Hall of Famers now. This is, of course, somewhat bittersweet because Gerrit Ger Gunnels did, in fact, miss the Hall of Fame. And... I don't know how I feel about that. Garrett Gunnell's number one problem was, by Jaws, he's slightly better than the average right fielder. But he doesn't have any of the sexy numbers that are going to get him over the hump. He was a very good player for a very long time, but for several years, he kind of played a bit down. And his biggest issue is, his skill set is the kind that doesn't get MVPs. It just doesn't. Uh, because an outfielder who derives most of value through walks and the occasional homer and a reasonable, if not outstanding, batting average is going to have a hard time. Now, I think his peak compares with just about anybody's. But I also get it. And I think if he would have stayed at third base for his career, I think he would have had a chance. I'm not going to force him uh, to join the Hall of Fame um, because yeah I would have loved him I would have loved for him to get it because I felt really good about Garrett Gunnels if you remember way back when we thought he wouldn't even make the team but moving him to right field turned out to be a brilliant call and it really turned into if there's a Pirates Hall of Fame Garrett Gunnels is in but I'm really impressed with Avila Avila it's generally Avila, right? Like, generally, the accent mark is on the first day. I'm really impressed he made it in on the first ballot. He was a lot better than the average catcher, so I'm not that surprised. And he's got plenty of hardware, right? Like, the man was a 10-time All-Star and a 7-time Silver Slugger. So, I don't mind it at all, but I am a little surprised that he sailed in so easily. And just to show you how important that position is. It truly matters quite a lot, actually. So, he in. 82% of the vote. Ty McDonald's in. Very nice. 
And uh, that's going to conclude that portion of the off-season. Well done, gentlemen. What are you offering me? You're offering me... Like, nothing. I guess that's what I find a bit frustrating about the way the game works, is it always offers, like, questionable players. Like, players are kind of like, mm, not so much. I don't know what could be negotiating, but to be honest with you, I feel pretty good about what I've got. It's going to come down to, do I need to make some trades to clear off the 40 man? Or is there any prospect that I don't think is going to work out? How much did Padilla get, I wonder? The Twins, who we just seen in the World Series, are going to pay him $16 million. I don't like his chances, friends. I really don't. <clears throat> I think you're making a grievous error, Padilla, and I think you should have stayed with me as a reliever. But we'll see what happens, okay? Because I do, I genuinely, unless they dick me over, like, I wish nothing but horrible things for Sergio Lara. I hope he signs for $1 and he gets sucked into a black hole. Uh, that's That would be the ideal season for me. Because he jilted me so many times that I, I want nothing to do with him. I have a lot of money, that's true. I should probably increase my scouting budget, maybe? That seems appropriate. Adrian Rojas is a perfectly Conlon starting pitcher for which you're paying a lot of money. And I'm not giving you Mike Iglesias. Go fuck yourself. Hard. All right, my friends. Um, cool. Give me batting ratings and give me Giovanni Prado. I literally have... Oh, these are pictures. Okay. Alfredo Lozano, Alfredo Lozano is like legitimately a stolen base threat. That's pretty funny, actually. I kind of like that. I wonder what I was going to do. Stop, 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 stop. I was going to increase my development and scouting budgets to the max. You're at the max. Oh, they already are at the max. Cool. <clears throat> well, awesome then. Any long-term contracts I want to I want to pursue. All right, couple of people who are not getting long-term contracts. Jobson is gone. Jones is probably gone. I don't want either part of any one. I don't want any part of either one of them at a big premium salary. I kind of want to try to low-key lock up Solano, but also not because of his injury problems. He probably won't have a very long career. The question is Sean Hill. And I think this season is going to be very, very important for determining whether or not we start looking in a different direction in the near future here. So we'll see. Yeah, Robbie Gear was useful to me, but I don't want to pay him literally any money. So if he wants, like, proper money, then that's going to have to be a no. Okay. I'm hoping Omero Spineo can make a big leap in spring training this year because I'm not going to pay Anthony Jones $10 million. I'm just not going to do that. I don't care if the fucker wins 12 gold gloves somehow in one season. Okay, I would care about that a lot, actually. If it was so awesome they gave him like 12 gold gloves, I would be like, damn. 
that's impressive. That would be completely fair, but I don't think that's very likely to happen. Steve Fabiano was fine. I don't hate it. But I'm also not convinced of anything in this package that really gets me excited. Mark Sams is a big fat nothing. <clears throat> I think I'm giving up too much here, to be perfectly honest with you. I think I'm giving up too much. For a player I don't necessarily think we need. So we'll keep going on spring training time. It feels weird to just look at the free agent market and just go, nah. But I think it's important to consider the financial realities of our situation, which is that you get four years of each player at the minimum. And that makes it really hard for players to become free agents young, and therefore it's easier to keep your own people. All right, any newbies to spring training? Spineo, 1,000% needs to go. Osorio will go. Almahuer will go. And the rest of you can get fucked. Um, I don't think John Navio is going to be a center fielder for much longer. Um, I still want to play a center because it's the harder position. And I want to see if he can eventually thrive at it but i think his offensive true offensive value is going to come in as a corner fielder that just grips it and rips it at a pretty high level um let's do pitching staff we'll run six men in spring training and who do we got here i feel pretty good about that um, this looks great. Uh, give me bench coach everything. Really game? I wish they would stop this. I wish they would stop going, ooh, Anthony Jones fast and make him a leadoff hitter, but whatever. It's just spring training. I'm not that bothered by it. You're benching, you're benching Rebelar in favor of Almaguer. That's interesting to me. We'll see what happens, but that is an angle I did not consider. Maybe Rebelar is the odd man out. Huh. Remember, the first, it's almost always down. Uh, Eric Roberts is in velocity. That's a giant warning sign. The only player I would consider indispensable on the current Pirates is... I don't want to say it out loud because then they'll get injured. Oh no, it was Manny Carrillo. They caught me. Um, You're going to be out already. They just start chucking people on the IL where appropriate. You'll be back in short order so i will go ahead and i'll put you on the 15 day il and then i can worry about what to deal with you then lozano's almost ready to come back that's why i'm leaving lozano on the roster not putting him in on the il
I look really bad this spring training. That's interesting. Okay, that hurts. Um, and the Mets are a very interesting decision about who ends up taking over the DH role. Um, interesting. Interesting. It could be Mike Soto. I wouldn't mind letting him get some major league experience and also occasionally give Pozo a break at third base. That seems reasonably interesting. I could also go to the free agent market. Is there like a top tier baseball blasting dude? I want batting ratings, and I, want, I care about contact first, and then everything else. <clears throat> there's really nothing here. Uh, there's nothing here that really excites me, so I think we will try to stay internal and see how we do uh, with without Mr. Iglesias. That is a real issue here. Good old Chris Merrill. That is interesting though. That's going to create a lot of interesting decisions to make once it, once we come around to who makes the roster and why. I genuinely think Mike Soto is a relatively finished product offensively. And so I'm thinking that a season of playing third base once a week and playing DH the rest of the time makes a lot of sense. Uh, whatever, Carrillo. Like, I'm picturing, like, the teacher, like, bursting into my office. Like, mini is gonna miss another week. It's like, dude, thanks, guy. Double thumbs up, but who fucking cares? He's, like, a minor, a minor piece of club and successes. Uh, Alfredo Lozano is losing, Alfredo Lasagna is losing some of his talent there. Um, really, do I have to have like 12 catchers in order to take full advantage of what we have? Maybe. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't see the leap, Mr. Spinell. That's most unfortunate because I really kind of hope you would. Alas, alack, we are not so fortunate. All right, so we got 37 players. We have 15 pitchers. Let's get that down to 12. So three pitchers, got to go. Ikanen, I'm just going to go ahead and wave you because, like, even using... A roster spot is offensive to me. Okay, Lozano won't be demoted. Yeah, he's not a good risk anymore. I'm going to trade you for literally anything I can get. That injury l wrecked you, my dude. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's them's the break sometimes. Uh, Bray Boy is a stupid fucking name, but I guess I could take Ryan Green and see if he just like transforms once he hits the majors under my tutelage. But and Franklin Grady is like he did good work. For me, but I don't feel super obligated to keep him. I'd rather give Osorio a chance in the big leagues. I think he's earned it. So we're gonna I'm gonna try to get you through waivers so I can keep you, but we'll see what happens there. So Osorio, you made the roster. Congratulations. And let's get the pitching staff set up. 
Um, Sal Rada will in fact not be citing because I'm not going to do a 6 a.m. rotation. That would be silly. Instead, Mr. Rada, you'll be an emergency starter and you will be a long reliever. I'm going to make Victor Rios a stopper, beginning in the seventh inning, uh, not a closer, just that. And I don't need this many long relievers. Uh, Manny Osorio, you're going to be a middle reliever. And I feel pretty reasonably good about this particular team here. Oh, Sal Rada's lost. No, 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 no. You're the emergency starter, long reliever. Sal Rada is going to be middle relief, long relief. Because the thing is, he doesn't throw... Uh, he His stamina is a little bit too low to be anything more than a short-term starter, and he's only got the two pitches. But I like him a lot as a pitcher, so I think we will give him a proper shot here. Okay, this all feels really good. Uh, can I lock up Rios right now? Nah, not interested. Rotation seems good. I like getting Joe Camp back rotation. It's going to make him happier. I'll be happier. Everyone will be happier. Uh, get fucked. I'm not paying you $16 million to be a starter. I just don't think that's a good use of my resources. All right. So we still have to get rid of eight more players and there ought to be position players. So beginning with catchers, I don't need three of them. Mr. Servine, back to the minors with you. I like Almaguer quite a lot, or Almaguer, I'm not sure. But you know what I don't like? I don't like rushing a player when I don't have to rush them. And I think a year in AAA would do him some good. Robbie Rodriguez, I'm going to keep on the roster for right now because I want to think about who's going to be the starting. No, it's going to be. It's going to be Soto. It just makes too much sense. Um, Huarami is a lot better defensively than Toro. And I did say earlier, I think Toro functions better as a utility guy. I don't need this many infielders, though. Like, not even close to need that many infielders. So I'm going to go ahead and demote Villalobos, that's for sure. And I'm probably going to demote... Corral can't hit. So I think I'm going to keep him over and, and then keep Toro. Salaya to the miners for certain. And I think Victor Solano goes to the Miners as well, with the understanding that he's going to be on a fairly short leash. He might get yanked into the majors at a moment's notice, but... Alright, so let's get the lineup set. So, the rating MVP is our number three hitter. Um, I don't see how there's any way he's not. Easy choice. Number three hitter. I kind of think you're putting Sean Hill back in as the leadoff guy. And just see what damage he can wreak. Well, let's put him in as the number two guy. 
And I'm going to try an experiment. I'm going to try batting him lower against left-handed pitching and see if that helps us at all. A batting leadoff will be... Oh, wow. I have very little power in this lineup. That's interesting. Um, let's let Pozo lead off. I think he seems like a pretty reasonable pick to be the leadoff guy. Um, Mike Soto, I think, would fit in wonderfully as the designated hitter and number two hitter here. I'm going to have you hit sixth against right-handed pitching and play DH. Jordan Munoz, come on down. You're the next contestant on the cleanup hitter is right. do that um our sixth hitter is going to be joe i think then revelar then Nukwamani. And last but definitely not least, Anthony Jones at center field. As long as Anthony Jones remains a superior fielder, I can't justify letting Matt Hawkins play every day in center. Uh, here we go. And we're going to generate the depth charts. And I'm probably going to change these, but we're going to see what happens here. Um, you're going to do once a week at catcher. And just if starter tired. I don't love the idea of Williamson getting so many reps. Like, I kind of want this to be Jordan Munoz's year to shine. But at third base, I'm going to let Soto start once a week. Just give him some reps at the hot corner and see if that gets him a little bit more development than just having him ride the pine and play DH the whole time. Hmm. I am slightly concerned about our lack of power. Uh, I am slightly concerned about that because, yes, I have the rating MVP, but I don't have a lot of oomph past that. Um, Sean Hill is, is good, and Jordan Munoz was wonderful in his rookie year. I need I need a I need him to take a giant step forward though, to help drive the rest of this offense, um, and I'm concerned about that. Uh, but I I've just always value contact more. Now I am somewhat concerned about Joe and his ability to be a top tier of offensive piece, but you can't ignore his plate discipline and the fact he is a very talented catcher. As is Avila. I mean, I have no problem letting them both take turns every now and again and then deciding what to do with them later on. But yeah, I'm hoping once a week off for Soto will keep, or once a week off for Poza will keep him fresh. And that it will also give Soto a chance to, to play some third base because he may be the third base into the future. I'm not guaranteeing that yet, but. I'm definitely leaning in that direction that he's going to be the third baseman of the future. 
Um, this is a giant leap, though. It cannot be understated how big a jump it is to go from high A to the majors. So you may be on a very short leash, my friend, but I'm going to give you that opportunity to see if you can hit in the big leagues. Um, which you would not have gotten if Iglesias had been healthy, by the way. So. I think this works. It is a vulnerable lineup. It's placing an awful lot on one through four to be top tier competitors the whole time. But I also genuinely believe that they might be able to accomplish that feat. And then all we need is reasonable production from two of the four, six through nine. And we'll still have a very terrifying lineup, I think. I think we'll still have a very scary lineup that can do a lot of damage. This is going to be a pitching first team, uh, but I think we're well equipped for that too. And we will just have to see what happens as the next season goes through. I don't think this team can win 104 games, though. I think missing Iglesias will hurt that much. Unless Mike Soto just is like, oh, the big leagues are easy and just hits like 375 or something. Uh, that could be a big shift in the opposite direction. That could be like, yeah, fuck it, let's go kind of stuff here. How are we minor league system wise? We are ranked 25th. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think we're probably a better organization than that. But I will acknowledge that we are a little bit more... We don't have as many mid-tier prospects. We've got lower tier prospects and we've got very high tier prospects. And then from there, yeah. You are a very long way away from the majors, my friend. Very far indeed. Spineo, you've got to do something this year. This has to be your year to take a step forward. If you want any chance of being a starting center fielder, I've got to see more from your bat. I've got to see that. I've got to see that contact rate go up. I've got to see that gap power, and I've got to see that home run power. I might just trade Spineo. Like, that feels kind of crappy, but he's just... If he was defensively a gold glover, that would be one thing, but he isn't. He is my best prospect at a position I'm quite weak at. And maybe OSA is right. Maybe OSA is saying he's going to be a premium offensive piece. I believe my Scott more than I believe OSA, but look, it's possible, right? Like, it is legitimately possible. So, I need to see him really take a step forward in AAA this year. If I see that improvement and I see him start to start to make some big changes then okay but when i was already looking like a depth piece not a starting center fielder i don't think i have a starting center fielder other than anthony jones which is what which sucks because anthony jones is merely like a two-win player at best like yes he steals bases great yes he plays very good defense amazing I don't hate him. I don't want to give that impression. But the impression I do want to give you is that our offensive ceiling is limited as long as we don't have a better center fielder. That's what I think. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to start adjusting my priors. 
updating my prior story and just accepting the fact that he is the best we're going to get. But yeah, the cupboard's looking a little bit dry right now. And this is partially because some of our prospects are not developing the way I'd hoped they would. Robbie Rodriguez. This is going to be a big year for you, too. If you can put together a dominating AAA season, I think you've got a pretty fair chance to make the team in the near future. Man, if Hawkins was a little bit better at center field, I'd probably just let him play center. But alas, alack, that ain't happening. Damn, a 21st round draft pick made the major league roster this season and is going to get some playing time. That's pretty bonkers. I love shit like that, though. Like, it's easy to see, you know, big time international free agent or first round draft pick making the major leagues. I vastly prefer the players that excel from humble beginnings. I think that's more exciting to see. We will look at the Hall of Fame, right? Let's look at all the pirates and let's talk about Avila. So we're going to do filter inductees by the only thing that matters, Pittsburgh Pirates. Apply filter. And then let's look at year inducted. This would be... Oh, interesting. Let me just sort it. Nope, I don't want that. I want to... Oh, this is how I can see where everyone came from. Yeah, actually, let me update the default view here. Let me create like a new view because I think that's just really cool to be able to see it all at a glance. Uh, so I'm going to do customize. We're going to go to the default view and we're going to customize the default view. So we're going to change this to customize. We're going to go to miscellaneous. And we're going to look at transaction type and date. And then we're going to do draft year, round, and pick. And let's hit OK. And so if you look at this, this tells you where our roster came from, which I quite like. Uh, let me go ahead and save this. And we're going to save this as roster break. Noon. Save it as global. And I'll save it as local as well. Uh, just for just for fun. That's fun. Uh, so as you can quickly see here, we have a couple of free agents. We have Joe and Avila, both of whom were signed. Uh, Joe was signed as a free agent from Taiwan. Avila was our international free. Agent. Oh, no, he wasn't. He wasn't a national amateur. He actually came in as a bit more than that. Cool. Sean Hill taken in the first round. Not a surprise. Mario Rebelar also taken in the first round. Interesting. 
But then we get Manny Pozo, international free agent. First round pick, second round pick, fifth round pick. Ninth round pick. Tenth round pick. Uh, we have an Esteban Soval, 21st round pick. If we look at this view for our pitchers, Jesus Solano, 26th round pick. We've got a lot of first round picks in this roster, though, just none of them that I actually drafted. Uh, that, I guess that's not great. Huh. I really am shitty at drafting pitchers, aren't I? Because I certainly drafted plenty of them. They just haven't worked out yet. It seems like I'm really good at identifying good pitchers, but not acquiring them other than through like free agency and stuff like that. That's pretty crazy. But I'm okay with it. Victor Rios must have come into the scouting discovery. Yep. A good spot, Cincy. Good spot. Okay. I got to get better at drafting and developing pitchers. That's clearly been a big issue for us. Um, I don't even have a highly ranked starting pitcher anymore. I keep getting suckered is my problem. I keep going, oh my god, that looks amazing. Give me that pitcher and then, or give me that hitter. And I have like 27 hitters, you can have 500 home runs, but I don't have any that can pitch. Uh, top prospects. Good old Spandar Avshion. Um, it appears to be like the best pitcher I've got. Jane Jones looks legit. He's quite far away from the bigs, but he does look like he could be a legit pitcher. Uh, but yeah, for whatever reason, we're not developing pitching at the same rate we're developing hitting. So I think it's we've been lucky to make good, uh, good strategic choices in both the free agent market and the trade market. Uh, now this will change slightly if we get Mini Carrillo back because, oh no, we traded for him too, and Joe Jobson was uh, a trade as well. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Anyways, uh, that's going to conclude today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it, even though there wasn't a ton of action in this episode. Um, I still think we made the right calls, and I'm really excited to see what Manny so or Mike Soto can do in the big leagues. Uh, this is a big jump for him. Uh, going from high A to the majors, but I'm really curious to see if he can hit and if he's going to be the next third baseman for years to come for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, don't also, another interesting storyline next season is going to be the, the watch, the, the March of 3000. Um, while I don't think Pozo's there yet, I think he's really close. I think he is quite close. As long as he keeps hitting 150 hits a season, which is below his career average, he's going to get there in two seasons. And unfortunately for him, I think he has to. If Manny Poza wants to go to the Hall of Fame, I think that has to be how he does it because he doesn't have a ton of hardware in the traditional sense, right? All the man has to show for it is seven all-star selections. That's it. Which means he's going to have to be a compiler, and that has to mean getting 3,000 hits, in my opinion. I still think he's got a good chance of making the haul no matter what because he was a very good third baseman. But I think the moment 3,000, uh, hit number 3,000 happens, I think he'll be in better shape. I also think 400 homers would help a lot, too. That's a nice round number. So, I don't know. But Avila being a first ballot Hall of Famer makes me feel really, really good because he was a non-traditional player. Um, a player where we, we recognized he had a weakness and we just let it go. Uh, if we look at his, his mighty origins. Yep, 
you almost got the max contract so hardly truly humble origins but nonetheless a worthy hall of famer and a good friend i'm i'm joking a little bit but not really um i'm really happy for him and how well he has done but that my friends is going to conclude today's episode i hope you have enjoyed if you have please remember to like and subscribe but until next time this has been a guardian Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.